socio-ecological problems, crime and corruption risk society. At the end of this session, you will be able to generalize what crime is, to describe what corruption is, to illustrate the causes of crime and corruption, to analyze the changing profile of crime and corruption, to summarize the consequences of crime and corruption in the society. Dear students, in this session, we are going to learn about two socio-ecological problems, crime and corruption, and how it affects the society. Well, students, let me ask you a question. Do you know what social ecology is? No, right? Well, let me explain it to you. Social ecology is mainly the study of social and behavioral consequences of the interaction between human beings and their environment. It mainly deals with the process of segregation. The social ecology of corruption deals with the corruption activities that risk the society. As of now, India is ranked 85 in the world for both crime and corruption rate. Both crime and corruption is increasing day by day in India. Eradicating these practices is a tedious task. The government and the concerned officials must take necessary steps to minimize the adverse effect of these problems. In the first section, we shall see what are crime and its types. In the second section, we shall discuss what corruption is. The third section, we shall discuss about nature of corruption. And in the fourth section, we shall learn about the consequences of crime and corruption. And the fifth section, we shall discuss the changing profile of both crime and corruption. Now let us discuss what crime is and its types. Let's start with a simple question. What is crime? Well, crime is any action that violates the law of country or rules of the state. Crime is that action which is harmful to oneself or the society that is illegal and punishable by law. A crime can range from a minor level of robbery to the extent of homicide or suicide. So students, who are criminals? Any individual who commits a crime is called as a criminal. In the current society, we are most vulnerable to various criminals in the society. They could be kidnappers, rapists, murderers, or even terrorists. There are criminals who are indulged in crime under the influence of politicians and businessmen. The rate of crime is increasing day by day. This can be mainly due to the rapid globalization and urbanization. In one way, the scientific advancements serves as a boon. In other way, it also serves as a bane. The same advancements can be utilized to harm the society. We are shocked every day by reading the newspaper in the ways the crimes are committed. There have been advancements in the way the crimes are being committed. In olden days, only the uneducated and poor people were driven to be criminals. But nowadays, well-educated young people are involved in major crimes. The technology has been exploited by these educated people to commit crime or terror attacks. Next, we shall discuss the types of crime. There are various categories in which the crimes are divided. The different types of crimes are divided into two categories. They are personal and property crime. Let us first discuss about personal crime. The crimes that affect an individual either mentally or physically are called personal crime. The examples of this type of crime are physical or mental or sexual assault, false imprisonment, drug abuse, kidnapping, rape, etc. The other type is property crime. Here, the crime is associated to possession of a property. The property may be acquired by the criminal by robbery, forgery, and false pretenses. 
Other types of crimes are crimes against morality such as prostitution and illegal gambling. Human trafficking is increasing in India day by day. What is an organized crime? Organized crime, as the name suggests, it is a well-planned, controlled crime coordinated by individuals working with other individuals. These crimes usually occur in higher levels. Organized crime disturbs the peace and threatens the human security. Organized crimes take place in the form of money laundering, human trafficking, people smuggling and cybercrime. The ultimate aim of money laundering crime is to gain money either directly or indirectly. Human trafficking is defined as the transfer or receipt of people by means of threat, power or vulnerability for the purpose of exploitation. People smuggling is the act to obtain illegal entry into a state party of which the person is not a national resident. Students, do you know what cybercrime is? Actually, the crime that involves the usage of computer, network, internet and other information devices such as smartphones is called a cybercrime. Due to increase in urbanization, organized crimes have gained technical advancements. Next, we shall discuss about the nature of corruption. Let's now take up a small question. What is corruption? In simple English, it is the use of public office or position for personal gain. In India, it is a major issue that is affecting our economy and is very much inevitable. A few examples of corrupt behavior are fraud, bribery, extortion, embezzlement, nepotism, a corrupt person is immoral, dishonest and demands a favor if the work has to be accomplished on time. The illegal favor done to a person in order to get a work accomplished is called as a bribe. One of the latest scam or corruption case that has hit our country you may remember is the 2G spectrum scam. Few leading politicians were the face of the scam. This scam was really shocking to the Indian citizens as it involved a money of about 176,000 crore rupees. Corruption starts at the top level and then slowly spreads to all the sections of the society. When we look at corruption in the public life, it covers all the sections, politics, government, business and education institutions. Corruption happens in every sector. It happens in government offices, politics, private sector, media, judiciary, police, religious institutions, etc. You name it. Nowadays, almost all the sections in the society are involved in corruption either directly or indirectly. Some do not have a choice than giving in for bribery. Everybody knows that criminals have no morals and we cannot expect them to behave in a right manner. Corruption has a huge impact on the economy of a nation. There are people who believe that our overpopulation is our biggest problem. And there are others who attribute most of our existing problems to corruption. Corruption is usually associated with a very high public investment, lower expenditures, low quality of public infrastructure and low government revenues. But these factors deprive India from a good economic growth. The methods of corruption are embezzlement, theft, fraud, extortion, blackmail, etc. Now what is embezzlement? It is the method of involving someone having access to assets by illegally taking control of them. Extortion is the criminal activity of obtaining money, property, or services illegally in a coercive manner, that is, by threatening and blackmailing. We need more honest and dedicated persons in public life. Control over electoral expenses could be some of the important prescriptions to combat corruption. Corruption has a corrosive impact on our economy and leads to loss of overseas opportunities. 
Corruption is a global problem that all countries of the world have to confront. As we all know, corruption occurs mainly due to fundamental institutional weakness. The implementation of institutional reforms can benefit significantly from the participatory process that is being developed for anti-corruption activities. Corruption is an inevitable problem everywhere. It is possible to stop corruption only when people consider the value of ethics and morality. We should be aware that corruption is tearing down our economy. If our economy is going at this rate, India will turn out to be top corrupt country in this world. We citizens are 50% responsible for this corruption. So we should start reforming ourselves and then the government. In this section, we shall discuss about crime, corruption and their causes. There are a variety of factors which lead a person to commit a crime. Can you tell me some of them? Yes, they are mainly social, economic, cultural and the person's family background. There are also certain psychological factors like anger, pride, jealousy, greed and revenge that may provoke a person to commit a crime. Some people desire to attain wealth quickly and they are manipulated by people with powerful political background to commit crime for money. Family and cultural causes. A person is closely related to his family from birth. The behavior of a person and his thoughts are influenced by his family. In families where there is no parental affection and attention, where members are constantly involved in conflicts or criminal activities, the child grows up watching and consciously imbibing these qualities and ends up committing crimes themselves. Cultural values also play an important role in a person's behavior. Television and movies are promoting aggressive behavior in teenagers and children. Bad habits like lying, stealing, and cheating are due to the effect of watching such programs on television. Social economic causes. In society, the peer group can influence a person to commit crime. Socioeconomic factors like inequality, lack of education, financial crisis can provoke a person to steal or commit other crimes. Peer pressure along with the greed for material wealth also influences a person to take to the path of crime. Over the years, corruption has increased and is now seen in all spheres of our daily life and activities. The unhealthy link between politics, criminals and bureaucracy often leads to corruption. Corruption has seeped into every corner of India and anything can be achieved through corrupt means. As our nation develops, corruption also grows and new methods are invented to cheat the public and government. One of the major causes to corruption is the rise of corrupt and selfish politicians. Another cause is the change in value systems. The changes in the basic values and ethics of our emerging politicians also cause corruption to rise. The old ideals of service, honesty and morality are regarded as foolish and discarded. The public tolerates the corrupt activities of the politicians to a large extent and even accepts it as inevitable. People have lost the will to protest against this corruption. The public is scared of offending the corrupt officials and its possible consequences. Poverty is another cause for corruption. Majority of the vast population in India are still living below the poverty line. These illiterate people are often victims of the corrupt officials who take advantage of them for personal gains. The government officials' salary structure is moderate. Election is the time when corruption is at its highest level. Politicians accept big funds from rich industrialists for personal favors. Public is bribed to give vote to these corrupt politicians. Next, we shall discuss the changes in socio-economic profiles of crimes and corruption. The socio-economic profiles of criminals have undergone a tremendous change over the years. 
the criminal's way of thinking has also gone through psychological changes. Researchers studying the change in pattern of criminal records have observed that poverty is not as strong a cause as before. Earlier, illiterate people struggling to live with scare, basic amenities were forced to beg or steal. But that is not the case now. Change in criminal operations. Nowadays, criminals no longer follow the traditional patterns of committing a crime. They have become more alert and cautious. Crimes are planned clearly without learning any single trace or clue. Technological advancements over the years has led to criminals using these methods to commit crimes. New age crimes like cybercrime, identity theft, hacking an online bank account of a person, obtaining sensitive information illegally by fraudulent activities are on the rise. So the law enforcement officials too need more sophisticated technologies to track and trap the criminals. Organizing crime. In earlier times, crimes were committed by an individual or a group of individuals. Nowadays, most of the crimes are cyber-based. These crimes occur in the cyber network. The use of sophisticated technological methods by educated people to commit a crime has become the new trend. The police and the investigators should have a clear idea of how the criminals would commit the crimes and a totally revised look on the patterns of crimes being committed needs to be taken care of. The law and order needs some amendment to make more stringent laws. This will help to reduce the crime rate to some extent. Changing profile of corruption. Corruption is a type of cancer which eats into our vital aspects. Many leaders have strived to control or eradicate this cancer but nothing much could be achieved. Laws should be made equal for both politicians and common man. Funding for elections is one of the top political corruptions. Huge funds are used for each and every activities related to elections. A bureaucracy needs to be friendlier, ethical, accountable and transparent. Judiciary is also a field where there is a lot of corruption. Local bodies like Lok Adalats, Lokpal and Vigilance Commission should also be given more cases for speedy justice with basic expenses. Fighting corruption has become a key development issue in India in recent years. Policy makers, businessmen and civil society organizations have started confronting the issue openly. Most people working in the field acknowledge that public education and prevention are equally important. Expansion and consolidation of democracy at the root level has enabled citizens to use the vote and newfound civil liberties to confront corruption, prompting leaders and opposition figures to show a stronger anti-corruption commitment. Now let us discuss about the consequences of crime and corruption. First, we shall see the consequences of crime in the society. Crime affects the whole society by causing insecurity which destroys the livelihood of people. It results in death of society members and can lead to destruction of property. Crime is a worldwide issue that people try to fight and find ways to prevent. Crime is in existence from the beginning of humanity. However, overall crime is a violation of law, a breach of rules or laws. The peak age of criminal activity is during the years between 16 to 25. This may be due to the following factors. Boys often have to prove their masculinity which can at times result in criminal activity. The likelihood of a young person belonging to a subculture is high and some subcultures engage in criminal behaviors. Teenage rebellion can lead to people breaking the law. There are several negative impacts of crime upon an area. They include depopulation, particularly in urban areas. High levels of crime may damage community spirit and result in less neighborliness. High crime levels can contribute to environmental poverty. Next, we shall discuss the consequences of corruption in the society. 
The effect of corruption has many dimensions related to political, economic, social and environmental effects. The economic effects of corruption can be categorized as minor and major. However, both in one way or the other have serious impact on the individual community and country. First and foremost, corruption leads to the depletion of national wealth. Large-scale corruption hurts the economy and impoverishes entire population. In the political realm, it undermines democracy and good governance by flouting or even subverting formal processes. It violates a basic principle of republicanism regarding the centrality of civic virtue. More generally, corruption erodes the institutional capacity of government as procedures are disregarded, resources are siphoned off, and public offices are bought and sold. At the same time, corruption undermines the legitimacy of government and such democratic values as trust and tolerance. In social aspects, corruption discourages people to work together for the common good. Demanding and paying bribes becomes the tradition. It also results in social inequality and widened gap between the rich and the poor. Civic strife, increased poverty and lack of basic needs like food, water and drugs, jealousy and hatred and insecurity. In the beginning of this session, we defined crime and explained who criminals are. Nowadays, scientific advancements play a major role in the crimes being committed and even educated people can be criminals. Types of crime were classified into two major categories, personal and property crime. Corruption is an intractable problem. It is like diabetes which can only be controlled but not totally eliminated. Though it seems very difficult to control corruption, it is not impossible. We must have some high principles to follow so that we may be models for the coming generation. Let's make our society corruption free. In the third section, we discussed about the causes of crime and corruption. From all the aspects of life, family background, social, cultural and economic causes of crime were discussed. In the fourth section, we discussed about the changing profile of crime and corruption. In this section, we discussed how change in crime has evolved in the past so many years. We also discussed about the change in corruption and some remedial measures. In the fifth section, we saw the various consequences of crime and corruption. We also discussed how these consequences affect the society and cause the risks. 